give it to you is 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. You're like, well, pastor, you don't understand. I work two jobs, right? I get it. A single mom who works two jobs and loves her kids and never stops, right? With a gentle hand and a heart of a fighter. I'm a survivor, right? Yeah, I get it. But that's not most of our stories. That was Reba, by the way, for those of you who are like, what was Pastor Eric doing? Right? Um, like most of us, that's not our story. Most of us, we're just, last three weeks are our issues. And so now we can't focus on tomorrow because we're too busy worrying about yesterday or last month or last year or the last two years because we felt so sad and bad and messed up over everything that was happening in the world that we just did some retail therapy to make ourselves feel better. There, there was a statistic, I don't have it in front of you, there's a statistic of people that bought or adopted dogs during the lockdowns. Don't raise your hand if you did it, All right? There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying like, there's a lot of people that did it because it was just like, it's gonna make me feel good. And now you have a, a living being that you're in charge of and you have to go back to work and your kids have to go back to school and life is now different and you made a decision and now what, tomorrow matters. Right? And so when we talk about it, what we're talking about is most of us are living with no regard for tomorrow because we're too caught up in either the instant gratification of today or cleaning up the mess of days gone by. And so how do we, while we're still cleaning up, have a vision for the future? Proverbs 2120, it's on screen, you can see it. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. We're gonna be in Proverbs for most of the morning. A couple other places, but mostly in Proverbs. The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Now listen, don't get mad at me. This is the Bible, right? But, and you don't have to say it out loud, but let, I just want you to think about it for a second. Are you wise according to scripture or are you foolish? The wise have wealth and luxury but fools spend whatever they get. Now, most of the time we'll read the first half of that scripture and we'll, get, we'll be like, well, of course, the, you know, they, they have wealth and luxury. They have it because they're wise with their money, not because their parents gave it to them, not because they won the lottery, not because, because if you watch like those shows about people who won the lottery, most of them ruin their lives. Why? Because they were foolish. But fools spend whatever they get. Part of our issue right, is a spending problem. But I'm gonna go further than that, right? Most of us, if we were honest with ourselves, our spending problem is a heart issue. We're trying to fix something that only God can fix. And Visa, MasterCard, and American Express aren't gonna get it done. The second verse that I wanna share with you this morning, Proverbs 6, six through eight, the book of wisdom. This is for those that are going, living paycheck to paycheck. Now this is the book of wisdom and it's tough. It's a little hard. He says, go to the ant, you sluggard. <laughs> Does anybody want to be called that? <laughs> sluggard, everybody just say it. Sluggard. It's kind of fun to say, right? Like go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, overseer, or ruler, yet it stores provisions in the summer and gathers its food at harvest. He's saying part of the problem that we're facing is that we have a short-term view of our lives. I only have to live today, tomorrow, six months, a year, but I don't really have a view, an eternal view of my life. Now, I'm gonna give you some examples this morning and they're gonna be financial, but I want you to understand something about investing in the future. These are relationship truths. Everything I'm gonna tell you today can work in your relationship. Everything I'm gonna tell you today can work in your church, can work in your neighborhood, can work in every aspect of your life. And when we talk about generosity, we're not talking just about money. We're talking about our time, what? Talent, treasure, and right. And each of us have been given this portion by God, the ability to either have or to make. And what you do with that, how you invest that is going to make a difference in the future. Now, when I say the future, I don't just mean my future. I mean the future of the world and the impact that we have and the influence that we have. Like what's, what's Hope City gonna look like when Pastor Eric's long gone? 
But how, how, how long will it be until Abraham or Teddy are standing on this stage? Come on. You see what I'm saying? Well, what, what's it going to look like generationally for you? Those of you who are your first generation Christians and you've come out of a life of brokenness and sin and shame and, and all kinds of, of messed up, think, stinking thinking, and now your family, the moving forward, has an opportunity to live a life that's an abundant life. You broke some generational curses. You broke the cycle of shame and pain because you invited Jesus into the middle of it. But now it's time to think about the future.